Um, hi, I don't think anybody's going to be on today at quarter past six on a beautiful Saturday or Friday afternoon. But I'm just putting this um, recorded on record uh, for myself, really, just to have a record because uh, time is ticking away until I'm in court next week. Um, I wrote an email today um, to the TDs. Um, there's 155 of them. I've never really had much time for politics, but I'm just going to name the people that I cc'd on it. So Joe Carey, Cahill Crow, Violet Ann Wynn, Matt McCarthy, Matt Carthy, Heather Humphreys, Brendan Smith, Neve Smith, um, Pauline Tully, Kathleen Function, uh, John McGuinness, Jennifer, um, Mor Moran O'Connor, um, Malcolm Noonan, John. Paul Phelan, Sean Canny, Kieran Cannon, and Rabbit, Catherine Connolly, Mairead Farrell, Noel Grealish, Hildegard Norton, um, Eamon O'Quiv, Pa Daly, Norma Foley, Brendan Griffin, Danny Healy Ray, Michael Healy Ray, Rhea Cronin, Bernard Durkin, James Lawless, Catherine Murphy, Cahill Berry, Martin Hayden, Patricia Ryan, Sean O'Fergal, uh, Barry Cowan, Charlie Flanagan, Sean Fleming, Carol Nolan, Brian Stanley, Brian Ledden, Willie O'Dee, Kieran O'Donnell, Morris Quinn Liven, uh, Niall Collins, Richard O'Donough, Patrick O'Donovan, Peter Burke, Sirica Clark, Joe Flaherty, Robert Troy, uh, Peter Fitzpatrick, Imelda Munster, Gerald Nash, Fergal O'Dowd, Rory O'Murhu, Dara Kaliri, uh, Rose Conway Walsh, Alan Dillon, Michael Ring, Thomas Byrne, Helen McEntee, Darren O'Rourke, Damien English, Johnny Gwirk, Padder Tobin, Michael Fitzmaurice, Claire Kirain, um, Dennis Norton, Frank Fain, Marion Harkin, Martin Kenny, Mark McSherry, Martin Brown, Jackie Cahill, Alan Kelly, Michael Lowry, Matty McGrath, uh, Mary Butler, David Cullinan, Matt Shanahan, Mark O. Kapasig, um, James Brown, Brendan Howland, Paul Kehoe, Verona Murphy, Johnny Mython, John Brady, Stephen Donnelly, Simon Harris, Stephen Matthews, Jennifer Withmore, Pat Buckley, Sean Sherlock, David Staunton, David O'Connor, Thomas Gould, Padraig O'Sullivan, Colin Burke, Mick Barry, Michael Creed, Michael Moynihan, Andres Moynihan, Donacha O'Leary, Michael McGrath, Simon Coveney, Michael McGrath, um, Michael Collins, Christopher Sullivan, Holly Cairns, Pierce Doherty, Porig McLaughlin, Thomas Pringle, Joe McHugh, Charlie McConnell uh, Denise Mitchell, Richard Burton, Keen O'Callaghan, Aidan O'Reardon, Sean Hohey, Eamon Ryan, Chris Andrews, Owen Murphy, Jim O'Callaghan, um, Mary Lou MacDonald, Nasa Hurrigan, Pascal O'Donoghue, uh, Gary Gannon, Louise O'Reilly, Joe O'Brien, Dara O'Brien, Alan O'Farrell, Duncan Smith, Owen O'Brien, Mark Ward, Emer Higgins, Jean O'Kennehy, Desi Ellis, Roisin Shorthall, Paul McAuliffe, Catherine Martin, Neil Richmond, Joseph O'Madigan, Angus O'Snodig, Breed Smith, Patrick Costello, Joan Collins, Sean Crow, Paul Murphy, Colin Brophy, Francis Noel Duffy, John Lahart, Usain Smith, Richard Boyd Barrett, Jennifer Carol McNeil, Cormac Devlin, Paul Donny, Donnelly, Leo Varadkar, Jane, Jack Chambers and Roderick O'Gorman. So they are our TDs um, and I've never really engaged with uh, politics because it's always appeared to be acting and I'm not sure how much power they have. And certainly in the last two years, I've had a number of OTDs confide or admit that they actually 
have no power and what they are is an interface really between the globalists and their agenda 30 goals which are um well alchemized now from being considered um conspiracy theory into reality so a couple of things today i saw that um lisa smith uh, received 15 months for how would you put it betraying all of her fellow soldiers and the security their security safety and trust and the country um, in joining a, a, an organization a terrorist organization abroad and i think if it was an irish man he probably would have achieved got more and also if it was a member of the ira or something or some agenda that you know being out five kilometers outside your um your covid line uh you can see the sentences are much harsher as i'm experiencing as well at the moment so i can't see the screen i don't know who's on i'm just doing this as a recording so this is the email that i sent them today uh okay so i started off dear men and women because that's what they are you know um but the difference is they've contracted they were voted in by the irish people so they were given a position of trust and they were in it for personal and profit they're all paid very well for uh, the role that they are playing but there is a trust there um you know especially in the older generation that the people that are voted in and the parties that they prefer have got their interests at heart and i think secretly they all know but they haven't told the public um especially the trusting public that that's not the case they're not serving the irish people so dear men and women trusted and acting as service as serving as tds whether you choose to read or ignore this is your choice because everything is choice um i'm just notifying you as an ordinary irish citizen and calling you to action as another citizen and as a person um according to the ideology of the globalist neo-gnostic transhumanists that you serve who are working through their hopeful realization of their fourth and fifth industrial revolution according to them 90 percent of humanity are nothing more than useless meat eaters and are hive minded by nature they have a name for this it's called a hylic and um, that's a greek word it means wooden people so i'm writing to 155 of you so under their assessment uh, it could mean that maybe 16 of you still have some connection to human spirit but it's a spirit that they want to crush and replace with AI, which, by the way, will never achieve singularity or be conscious. Uh, the rest, by nature, are naturally geared and plugged into serving the one world hive mind dream. Um, and they are being true to their nature. And we have to accept that. Uh, the question is, are you being true to yours? If you don't feel deeply uncomfortable with what is unfolding in the world, then it's safe to say that you are considered as one of the hive mind who worship AI and any agenda it tends to weaponize to achieve its goals. You will therefore not be interested in anything I have to say and you can head off now for a barbecue. If there are any of you left, I do not write to you in your capacity as a TD because I didn't vote for you and frankly it's clear that the acting role is not very good and uh, the serving appears to certainly not be applying to the people who trusted you and voted for you. I'm facing potentially five years in prison for defending my daughter and my dwelling from 16 mercenaries who burst into our bedroom unannounced, unidentified and unlicensed and assaulted and terrorized and videoed us on their personal phones undressed while a man and a woman sitting in a uniform acting as guardy smirked outside and refused to come and help us when we asked them and told them of the assaults. I was left to defend um, my daughter and myself and my dwelling on my own and the guardie then came back immediately to arrest me, leaving my daughter lying terrified and crying in shock on the road with my car engine running while these men who assaulted us and terrorised us moved into our house and our belongings and our life. I returned to Ireland in 2010 after a vicious assault and strangulation by my ex-husband with whom I'd separated from in 2004. And in 2009, he conspired with Bank of Ireland staff in Dublin airport to fraud me and steal my mortgage on my dwelling protected by the constitution i discovered that bank of ireland and he had acted against my rights as a customer 
and assisted him in obtaining this mortgage and stealing it. I immediately reported this to Bank of Ireland, the manager in Dublin Airport, and I also uh, received a, a data protection finding against them. But I was accused by the manager in Bank of Ireland of causing problems for the bank employee at Dublin Airport who, because she had trusted my ex-husband so much because he was a pilot. Well, I had trusted the bank too, and I was their customer. I was tortured hundreds of times through your so-called court systems and the utter disgusting disgrace of the family law courts, and I'd returned to study law and defend my rights. I don't look for any of your standard, I'm sorry, but this is in the hands of the court's response. And let's not pretend that either you or anyone else believes that we have a government or a court system that are serving the men and women and the children of Ireland. And I'd add Angarda Siakona to that. You have all contracted and been rewarded financially for your own personal profit and gain at this crossroads time for humanity as an ideology developed by a couple of neo-gnostic transhumanists rolling out their global one world order government reset ideology. I worked for one of them, Bill Gates, and I did meet him. And in fairness, if you listen to the man carefully and read their business plans, they are very honest about their utter disgust and hatred of human life and all life, really. But they do pay well, don't they? Um, they know how important contract law is, consent and free will. In fact, they're obsessed in telling everyone the truth and then using people like you to confuse them and then getting them to consent away their rights and their very life and their loved ones. But they do laugh behind the closed doors at anyone who's serving them. I couldn't, they couldn't have done any of this without those of you or anyone who they can convince to roll out their plans and are willing to partake in heinous crimes or worse, stand by and stay quiet. It may or may not shock you that these same philosophers at the top of the pyramids are playing with humanity and control both sides, the right, the left, the blue, the red, the black, the white, and usually both sides of all wars because division and fear is both profitable and a distraction. It's all theatre, but the biggest crime is to name the game. There are a few of you on this list, there are a few of you on this list that I've met or know personally. One I grew up with since a child. And I can tell you, I don't recognise any of you anymore, even as human or as the people I knew. The light has gone from your eyes. So much of your human spirit has gone. And the stuff that's driveling out of your mouth is utterly shocking. And I can see it in your eyes that you're all utterly miserable. It wasn't really worth it, was it? And if you don't know that yet, now you will someday, very soon. I can see murderers and paedophiles and rapists and traitors are treated better, in fact rewarded, as the ordinary people are crushed by the weight of oppression which you are willingly heralding in to your own country. These neo-nastic transhumanists and their dream of the fourth industrial revolution, where they want to bring biology to machine and to virtual reality into the metaverse, and their utter hatred for the life of innocence and the life of nature, um, and they believe there are different types of humans. Maybe there are. If you are naive enough to think that any of this is about progress or money or war or health or climate or even power, you're wrong. They are just the hooks that they have used to hook people into serving them and compliance and fear or corruption or bribery. You really don't understand the driving ideology. They detest life. They detest nature. Most of all, they detest you. They detest you more for serving them and than, than those that they punish on their behalf from non-compliance. I attach for you a short video made um, straight after our attack when everything we had was stolen and the mercenaries were living in our house. My daughters had no school books, clothes. They'd taken everything we own. They took all of our property. They took my dwelling. They took our personal items. They took my freedom and left nothing but a pair of my underwear nailed to the back door. This is the second time as well the Gardaí have conspired to criminalise me. So my court date is Wednesday, is Thursday in Dunleary, where I'll face three charges. And as I watch another Lisa, Lisa Smith, to, to receive almost a congratulatory sentence from the Irish courts of 15 months for the betrayal of her country and fellow soldiers in the most heinous of fashion. I face five to seven years for defending my daughter and my child and my dwelling as I'm entitled to do as I'm obliged to do as a mother from the mercenaries that were sent as a personal attack using the Bank of Ireland as a pretense 
because I've stood up to every attack in the legal system, the Gardaí, who were used as willing tools of abuse. Myself and my daughters are just at the front of a train. It's time that each of you considered your positions in the game that you're participating in. Just pause, take some time. You all know what's going on and I'm sure you're afraid to stand in your truth. What are you trying to avoid? Because the train that's coming is going to get you too. I don't expect any direct assistance from you. It would be nice, but I don't expect it. I've committed the biggest crime in this country because I've looked people in positions of authority, in uniforms, in wigs, in the eye, even activists. And I've called them out to their face and told them that they are personally, morally, legally and spiritually responsible for all free will choices. And that's why an army was sent through our bedroom doors. I've protected so many people who could not protect themselves, victims of domestic violence and their children, victims of our legal system in the banks and the Gardaí over the years. I've seen well behind your wizard's curtain, well behind the Maya of the illusions that people buy into and believe. Not the state, not the bank, not the Gardaí, not the judicial have clean hands in our case, yet they're all colluding together now to put me on trial. They've lost all pretense of jurisdiction over myself and my daughters, but still the show goes on. What has happened to me, no doubt would be all of your own worst nightmares. And I don't know whether you would survive it. The fact is, if you stand by and allow these things happen to others on your watch and have been informed, then the beast that you're serving, whether within or without, takes that as consent from you that worse will happen to you and your loved ones. It's a basic natural law. It's a law of nature. And nature always balances things out. When it does come time for you and yours and you realise too late that you believe the ultimate liar, that you are safe, that you are not responsible, or that you are part of the elite, who will you turn to cry to when you find out that was a lie? And it will happen. And you will be told that. And then they will say to you, well, you consented. As someone who has had everything taken, my career, my name, my daughter's childhood, my dwelling, and many years of my life, and everything I've ever worked for now, and now they want to imprison me, I am an expert on this, and I am qualified to tell you this. I wouldn't swap places with any of you or any of the people involved in this, or the bystanders whom I hold more responsible, and especially the female bystanders or participants especially as I hold women and mother to a higher standard than men in defending each other, because we are the portals of life into this earth, mothers and women, and they are even trying to remove us from the Constitution. Look, lads, it's not rocket science. Do no harm, take no one's property, and defend the vulnerable. Cowardice is well rewarded in the short term, but in the long term, there's hell to pay. I wish you all strength and courage at this crossroads for each of you in your life and thereafter, if you believe in a thereafter. I suggest you bring your thoughts to those moments before you sleep at night. The niggling feelings you may have, or better still, if you can, bring yourself forward to the time we're all guaranteed as we leave this life. All of your excuses for cowardice, all of your reasons for not being authentic, and all of the rewards you were paid to sell yourself and your country and your children and your family out will, will be nothing. And all you will see is the lies that you fell for and the futility of what it paid you. I know this. There's been a number of times in my life that I faced death with hands around my throat and death threats and beatings since I was a child. And on the 30th of April, when I had to stand up naked in my bedroom, my sacred space, my dwelling, with that band of vile mercenaries hiding their face in masks and videoing me. They don't deserve the title of men. 
I realised that I was willing to die to protect my child. And I acted from that place. From the day you were born, you were lied to. You were told that you're not home. You're told that you're not safe and you've been told that you're not enough. And from there, they hooked into your fears and your desires and your greeds and your ambitions, created their hierarchical system and their Jacob's Ladder that people try desperately to climb until they get to the top and they realise it's all lies and the drop down is really, really scary. So what would you die for? What do you stand for? What do you live for? You've clapped in every single weaponized agenda over the last two years. I'm now a refugee in my own country because of you and your compliance and your social virtue and signaling and your cowardice. And you will be too, have no doubt about that. You participated in our torture, but you will get it directly from the globalists when they decide they're done with you. I also see, see that person who acted as a journalist, acted as a journalist, Simon Karzoff from the Irish Times, who two minutes after I walked out from court, published his hit piece, obviously one-sided script that he was given on April the 1st. I chatted to him on the phone and I told him what I thought of him. I was on speaker and whoever was sitting there with them heard too. But let's not pretend we even have true journalism anymore. The media has been used to weaponize all the agendas of the paymasters. I don't read the media. I don't watch TV. And anyone who does is eating packaged feces. The headline should have read that day, Simon, 52 year old domestic violence survivor was systematically abused by the courts, the Gardaí and the Bank of Ireland was arrested for defending herself and her child against 19 unannounced, unlicensed, armed, balaclavaed, coward thugs who legally illegally stormed their bedrooms, videoed and assaulted them, while the Gardaí refused to come to their assistance, sat out in their car and smirked and waited for their masters to call them back to arrest me. I sincerely wish you all the best at this time. May your cries, which will happen in the future at some point, be responded to exactly now the way you respond to ours when your time comes and 100% guaranteed it will come have a nice weekend Lisa Lily in the new so I sent that off today now I know for a fact that they're being absolutely bombarded as people are starting to write in letters and their secretaries which are quite well paid um, and are so used to working from home now are being bombarded um, I don't know what the future holds but I have read the business plans and I know what they, they plan for us I was completely confused about the digital AIB and, and the John McGuinnesses and the, uh, Pascal O'Donoghue saying that they were blindsided and shocked because if the government actually owned 68 of AIB they had to pass that off so how could they be all shocked? Was it a test run? you know, for the algorithms to pick up from the internet what people were saying and print out, you know, the, the current pulse of Ireland on this? Or was it an opportunity, like, kind of pretend it was happening, do it, and then have the, the new saviour programme step forward and let the people think that they're power matter while they hemorrhage all of the energy back into, into the internet and then they go off? Because have no doubt, the internet and us writing on, online and doing all of these things in a sense, it is a hemorrhage of our energy where our brains think that we're actually doing something significant. You know, we didn't have the Internet years ago. People actually had to act. And, you know, since the Internet has come in and has been feeding AI um, and collective consciousness has been linked up together, it really is a struggle for each one of us to stand in our actual power and act in the in the real world. Um, and not be tricked into thinking that writing up things on, on the internet is going to change anything because really all it's doing is serving um, the algorithms which is feeding the AI and I actually think at this point
the AI God um, that they serve and that they want to serve, which is really only a very fast computer program. It's not conscious at all, um, but it regurgitates out. It's been given a goal of 2030 and uh, the idealism of transhumanism, and it just keeps calculating up people's reactions. At some point, we're going to have to, we're all going to be standing in front of the monster, like right into its jaws, like the jaws that I've seen for the last 14 years, up really, really close. But you know what? Every judge, every guard, every politician, every person um, has forgotten their own power. And it doesn't take many of us. Um, it doesn't take many of us to stand up. But we're being forced now. Are we going to live a life on our knees? serving some poor reflection of consciousness that a group of hylics have come up with um, in their philosophy, trying to replace nature, replace love, replace touch, replace hug, replace, replace human beautiful expression of consciousness. And Leo, God love him, Faradkar, Mr. Radker. You know, when he put up that um, photograph of his metaverse self, I couldn't see much difference between them. I realised that his metaverse self, and it was the same with Mark of the Zuckerbergness, they didn't look that different from their metaverse avatars. So maybe they're being true to themselves, maybe that is their um, natural progression of evolvement of a high lick. But you really need to ask yourself, is that what you are? Or are you an expression of spirit and consciousness? And you've been smashed on the rocks, manipulated and lied to since the day you were born. And there's just that little part of you that's screaming inside, waiting for everyone else to step forward and stand up you know but you have to stand up you are that person it only ever needs one person to do it and if each person does it in their own capacity or at least supports the people who have you know then maybe that's enough because I really don't think this big bag monster is anything more than a little tiny wizard behind a curtain who feels like nothing and envies human spirit. So have a nice weekend. Again, I don't know if I this recorded. I'm not very good at this. And um, wish me luck again next week. Thank you.